morning and it's a Saturday morning and I'm back in the shed it's not too bad outside it's cold and a bit windy but it's not too bad but we're in lockdown so I'm behaving and I started messing about with mediocre the other night and I'm going to continue messing about today um, gave it a quick sanding sanded the sticker almost flat and just threw some paint on it and it looks really nice and it's come out really nice that's only had when was that thursday evening so day and a half perhaps a day day and three quarters we call it a day and three quarters to cure and what I was trying to find out was whether it would adhere to the uh, manufacturer's paint or whether it was going to react with it in any way. Perhaps it's too soon to tell, I don't know. Um, and whether I'd need to prime it first or indeed go back to bare metal. I don't really want to go back to bare metal because obviously the manufacturer's paint is spot on. So I don't really want to go back to that, back to a bare tank again and work my way up from there. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to rip all these towels and everything off and take the tank off, give it a bit more of a sanding. I think I'll do the cowl as well because that got mullered when I did the fiberglassing. The side rails weren't doing as well, but... Yeah, I think I'll do the cowl and the tank. Um, give it a bit of a sand down and throw some paint on it. I've had the heaters on. I've got one there and one in there. I've had them on for a couple of hours. So it's it's a bit too hot in here, to be honest. Um, but once I start spraying and I put my fan on, that will soon suck out all the heat and dust. So, yes, that's what I'm going to do. Strip this down, take the tank off empty the tank then take the tank off and get on with a bit of sanding and painting so I'll do some of that that's all the towels and tape removed so now seat off as easy as that and then because of my beautiful design I need to take off the seat lock bracket to be able to get to the tank hinge um, first of all little bit more difficult than a standard machine because I have to run my throttle cables through there we go and what I didn't do I've got a bonnet catch somewhere there you go an official Suzuki bonnet catch. Marvellous. To hold my tank up. Don't know which way it goes though. And it might not be <laughs> for this bike. There's not a hole there that it goes into, unless it's meant to go into the air filter hole. I was so proud for a moment there. Right, so now I've got all the fuel leaning back. I don't know how much fuel is in here. Well, I need to siphon that out. It's about there, so probably about half a tank. So I'll get on with siphoning that.
So that's most of the petrol out. I need to take the tank off now and get the rest of it. All you've got in here is an electrical connection which just pushes together. There's a little tab on this bit there that you just need to push in and then pull the two halves apart and then the fuel line is held on with this weird thing and all you do on this is all you do on that all you do on the fuel line is push these two tabs in which then goes underneath this outer ring and you can pull that off and it's a bit fiddly hence why I didn't have the camera and everything going but yeah just push them to out of grey tabs together and you'll see it's similar to the electrical connection push that in and then you can pull this pipe off so that's that released should have there we go vent pipe going down there well, I'm gonna pull it off pull it off the top end pull it off the top end nipple there because I've run that through and it's fairly tight in there all the way down to here. Um, so it is now just the back hinge that needs undoing and I can take the tank off. Excellent. Right, taking the tank off, this bolt does not come all the way out and that's nothing to do with my design. The rail on this is in the same place as the rail on um, the standard bike so that wasn't the issue so I started taking off the bracket underneath here little 10 mil bolts out of there to take this frame off and then an amazing epiphany I dropped the torch an amazing epiphany because I did the front two and I started doing the back two and it's like I'd have to jack the tank up to actually get my hands in there and, and then just happen to notice there's two 12mm bolts either side either side of the tank hinge so I've taken them out so this should now just lift off this tank just to be in the operative word let's give it a go As easy as that. Okay, I think I've taken enough fuel out of it that um, when I undo this, there's not going to be loads of fuel coming out. I'm not going to find out. Until I undo it. There you go, one GSXR 1000 fuel pump and level switch, is that all it is? Anyway, that's out. That's out, I've got a new O-ring to go in if I need it, that one looks pretty much spot on, would you chance it? I don't think so. And then fuel, I keep putting my torch away like a fucking idiot. Needs draining. Right, let's get that somewhere where I can actually drain it quite 
brilliantly. Brilliantly? Quite nicely. Nicely? Somewhere where I can actually drain it. That'll do. Don't need extra words. Okay, fuel tank. Welding table. Dubri. Hopefully won't make as much mess. Let's give it a go. And if you were wondering... Can you see that? Yeah. And if you were wondering what I use, it's a bit of pipe with a one-way valve. So you up and down up and down and up and down and the fuel gets in but can't get out and eventually it gets over whatever curve you got in it and then gravity takes hold and away it goes I think actually it's going to be good enough on the floor There we go. Now you can hear it. And that is somewhere near empty. Yeah, this might turn out to be disastrous. And I'll be tasting petrol the rest of the day. But I'll give it a go. Well there you go, no mouth full of petrol and the tank is completely empty now I'm going to go for my lunch and let that fume out a bit and then the real work starts Bon Appetit Well, I don't really know how far I got with the filming so I'll give you a rundown The bikes, although the cycles are badly covered the motorbikes, which are much more important, are all covered makes a change and the paint booth is back up and inside we have a cup of tea I got I got done with the deal on that I think my youngest daughter um, popped round and um, she's nicked two bottles of Corona but she said but that's okay because I've made you a cup of tea yeah, I think I've really lost out there. Anyway, too late for that. Um, gloss black is partial, partially shaken. Um, tank is ready for sanding. I've taped that up, cleaned the shit off that was around there. Um, taking the, uh, what are they called? Tank savers, tank guard, thing that goes up there. I've taken that off um, and cleaned off all the glue. I've taken the cowl off, that's ready to be sanded. I've got a 600 grit stick on wet and dry pad. And I'm just about to, I was gonna say sand it, but I'll best drink my tea first or else that'll have a lovely layer of crap. Um, fans on, it's not on, fans in, the paint booth ready for action so hopefully everything's ready to sand this off and the cowl well it's not so much sand it all off it's scuff it up ready to take paint um, and this has come out really well I spilt some paint paint spilt some petrol on it here and it's done nothing to it. Now being that this has only been on here a day, well about two days, day and three quarters I think we agreed earlier, day and three quarters, 
to not have any bubbling or anything on that is quite nice. This is leftover um, penetrating oil to get the glue off and it won't be brake cleaner because that evaporates really quickly. Those little spots there. Um, but yeah, I'm very impressed. The, let's get an extra bit of light on. The finish on this is quite good. So I'm fairly confident that if I just scuff up all the paintwork now, um, should be good to stick a load of black. I'm gonna do the whole thing in black and then I'll go over it in red. The red will just be this top turban bit and this stripe here, which is the Suzuki theme, but as I say, the blue will be red and the white will be black to go with, oh, you can't see it, I've covered it up. Um, the rest of the tail to key in quite nicely, I think. So I'm gonna start, no, I'm not. I'm gonna drink the tea first and then I'm gonna start sanding it. How about that? Okay, that's good enough to paint. It's taking the shine off. We'll give it a little bit more down there, but um, take the shine off, take the stickers off. That's ready. So I'll do what I've done on there. On this whole thing here um, and then I'll bring you back because it'd be a little bit tedious watching that <laughs> not that my videos are ever tedious not that my videos are never tedious they're never tedious or well, they are tedious they are tedious aren't they anyway anyway I'll sand all that down and then bring you back we'll be ready for a few coats of black morning I don't know where I got to yesterday with video footage but this is where I am today this is Sunday morning I spent about three three or four hours yesterday stripping the bike down and doing the prep work it's all been sanded it's been washed and I've just uh, panel wiped it to degrease it um, and before I start painting it I will just tack cloth it just to get the final remnants off same with the cowl that's all been done so just need to get on with painting it now and my red paint I went at that because this was sitting a bit proud the Suzuki was sitting a bit proud still and you could make it out so I'll flatten that back even more um, I just didn't want to go back to uh, bare metal, so I'm a bit tentative on that. So that got done, but I was quite happy with my my red paint because this took ages to come off. This area up here 
and down the front and along the edge that wasn't sprayed or rubbed down properly before I put the red on it was just this area here really and that took a lot of sanding to get anywhere with it to get the blue showing again so I was quite happy with that I'm quite happy of the adhesion. so I think I'll be okay at least for a week <laughs> after painting it um, so I'm going to put the first colour on which is going to be the black going to cover the whole thing in black um, and then I'll do the red afterwards but as I say first of all got to tack cloth it off um, put my gloves on and start painting beautiful it's all progressing scarily quickly maybe so that was after the first coat just a attack coat and now it's been about 12 minutes since that's been put on the fan does a beautiful job of keeping this fume free but I'm still wearing my PPE um, so yeah that's how it came out after one now it's time to do another now that definitely looks a bit better that's the second coat gone on just come back to do the third here we go again okay last coat going on so this would be coat number four and that I think will be enough we said um, at least 15 minutes between coats the fans taken away any dust extraction and the heat has been on it's it's got to be around 20 degrees in here so I'll stick one more coat on that and then I'll leave it for a couple of hours in the heated environment and then um, take it indoors when I turn all the heaters off in here so I'll get on with that I've given the tank oh let's take the clip off I've given the tank an hour and a half in here since it was painted in the heat well it feels and looks quite nice if I could turn the And there are imperfections in it. But for the lack of prep that I did, that's come out all right. For some reason, this is super glossy silky down there. Whereas this feels rough. But it has got quite a nice glossy finish to it. Um, I'll leave this another week <laughs> to cure. Uh, and then I've got to tape off the top, which will be red. And then a red stripe up here, similar to the decals that were on it before. But um, in red. But I think that has come out pretty good. That will be the next step, marking out where the old Gixa style paintwork was. Um, so there's a stripe about here. And then a blue crown, whereas this have a red crown and a red stripe. So it's working that out. And then next weekend, yeah, mark that out and then scuff the paint up and put the red paint on. Unless I come up with a different 
different idea for the paintwork. Hmm, that might be an idea. But at the moment, that looks spot on. Hopefully, it will stay on. And as I say, next weekend, I'll get whatever red pattern I'm going to put on it, that'll be on there. Then uh, that'll be left a week to dry. And then I've got the decal to go on with the name of the bike. And then the lacquer. I've got petrol resistant lacquer. Um, but a lot of people were saying it's no bloody good. So, <laughs> so I'll probably paint that onto the cowl first. And then see how it reacts on that. Because next weekend I'll be able to lacquer the cowl. I'll be able to put the stickers on and lacquer the cowl. Because that's only, that's only black. So... Yeah, I'll put the auto let. Uh, there you go, petrol resistant lacquer. Tough, durable finish. And I've used Auto Tech black um, and the lacquer will be Auto Tech. The red paint is arc right so I'm hoping there's no reactions between the two of them we'll find out next weekend unless I have a look to see if auto tech do a candy red yes that might be a way anyway that's the tank done in black and now I'm just going to take it indoors and it will sit in the spare room for a week to let it cure completely before anything else is done to it. There you go, that concludes my painting for today. See you when I, well, see you in the next video when I do the red, the candy red. Later. Tira.